Welcome back to Searching for Faith. If you're new here, I'm Tracy, and I'm so glad that you clicked on this video. This video, we are starting with the first week of Advent, and we're going to do a Bible study together. But first, I wanted to start by explaining to you all what Advent is. So what is not Advent? Advent is not the 12 days of Christmas. Advent is not a box of treats where you open up a different window each day and get a special treat or a special gift. Um, uh, we have kind of taken that term to call it the Advent calendar, but what Advent really is, is a period of time that Christians recognize leading up to the birth of Christ. And now, do we know exactly what day Christ was born? No, we don't. Some will say that we chose December 25th because it is the winter solstice or near the winter solstice and that we combined Christian um, holidays with pagan holidays or tried to take over the pagan holiday. Um, but the that is like not completely substantiated by scholars. Um, and most agree that the most likely reason that we chose December 25th to celebrate the birth of Christ is because the reason we really most scholars agree that the reason that we most likely celebrate it on December 25th is that March 25th, which is nine months before December 25th, is considered to be the date of Jesus's crucifixion, or at least celebrated or um, recognized as that in the early church. And so they believe that the early church believed that Christ was both conceived and crucified on the same day or around the same time of year. And so if you look at that he was conceived at the same time that he was crucified, um, you know, that same season of the year, and then you look at nine months after his conception, um, then his birth date would be December 25th, nine months exactly after when they recognized that he was crucified in the spring. So that is why we recognize or celebrate Christ's death and resurrection um, in the spring, and we celebrate his birth in the winter because the early church believed that he was uh, both crucified and conceived at the same time of year and that if you look at nine months after conception then that would make him born in December. So that's why they celebrate but we really don't know exactly. So but that's where that all comes into play. And Advent is just that period of time leading up to Christ's birth. Um, it starts typically the Sunday after Thanksgiving, which this year is December 1st. And there are four weeks and five candles. Okay, so you, I'm gonna give you like a little picture of what an Advent wreath looks like. They are different colors. I can't remember which colors they are now. I'm blinking. Uh, but you have the week one of Advent, which is the week of hope. Um, you can also consider that the week of prophecy. Week two is the peace candle, um, which also could be, you can look at Bethlehem as that candle. Week three is joy. The shepherds. Week four is love. The angels. And then the last candle is the Christ candle. And that is lit on Christmas Day. So it's just one of those Christmas traditions that Christians have celebrated for hundreds of years. Um, and like I said, we... It's just a time of reflection and leading up to Christ's birth, um, celebrating him, reflecting on him, reflecting on the events and the things that led to his birth. Um, and then on Christmas Day, of course, we celebrate Christ and his birth. Um, so we are going to be doing specific Bible studies each week of Advent. 
So if you would like to prepare yourself, I'm going to give you guys like the outline right here. So today, 12-1, week one of Advent, the Hope Week, we are going to read Isaiah 7, 14, Isaiah 9, 2 through 7, Jeremiah 31, 15, and Matthew 1, 17 through 25. And we're going to look at those together. On week two, our Peace Week on 12-8, which is next Sunday, we're going to read and study Luke 1, 26 through 55. 26 through 55. On week three, our Joy Week, we are going to read together and study Luke 2, 1 through 20. And then week four, our Love Week, we are going to read Matthew 2, 1 through 23. And then on the last day, which we're going to do the Sunday after Christmas, because I'm not going to post a video on Christmas Day, but the Sunday after Christmas, we are going to do our Christ um, day of Advent, and we're going to read several verses together. We're going to read Psalm 72.10, Colossians 1, 15 through 20, Hebrews 2, 17 through 18, and Philippians 2, 6 through 8. I am actually making a printable of this calendar of Bible verses that we are going to study together, and I will make it available for free on my Patreon with my other printables. So go check out my, my Patreon and join for free if you would like access to that Advent schedule of Bible study. And you can read the verses beforehand before we do the study together on Sunday. Um, so definitely go check it out. I will, of course, link it below. Okay, guys. So now that we've um, gone over what Christmas is, why we celebrate Christmas on in December, what Advent means. We are going to dive into our Bible study for today. So the method that we're going to do this in is that we're going to kind of do it a speed up to music where I'm studying and writing in my Bible. And then we're going to break it down together and look at the highlights of what we learned together. Um, so we're going to get started. The tools that I'm going to use, of course, is my, if you've been here for a while, is my journaling Bible. So we're going to write notes. I have all of my Flex Marvy Le Pen markers here. I also have my Fine Tip um, Marvy Le Pen markers, which I'll use to write notes as well. Um, and then I also have my Mr. Pen Highlighters, which I use in my Bible. We're going to use our Oxford New... It's upside down. I'm going to use my... Sorry, the papers are messed up. My New Oxford Annotated Bible um, for notes, as well as my apologetic study Bible. And then we may also refer on my iPad to the Enduring Word commentary. But this part, like I said, is going to be sped up to music while I'm doing the study. And then we will break it down and read through the notes and check, like, look at, like, the highlights and things that speak to us. Okay, so let's get started.
Okay, so now we are going to go back and we're going to read these verses together and we're going to point out the things that we learned. Okay, so let's go back to Isaiah. If I can find it. It's right here. Isaiah 7, 14 first. So Isaiah 7, 14 says, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall, and shall call his name Emmanuel. So it is possible that this verse could have been referring to either Hezekiah's son who was already born or Isaiah's son, but Isaiah already had children as well. So neither, um, oh wait, sorry, Ah neither Ahaz, and I think, is Hezekiah Ahaz's son? Is that what it was saying? I mean, is that Hezekiah is Ahaz's son? But the point is, is that neither of these people's wives were virgins at the time that this was written. Like, they already had children. Um, so it, it, the, the point of it is that although it could be referring to a child being born at this time, regardless, it is pointing to the future birth of Jesus. Um, uh, there are two words for marriage. The Alma is the Greek word, is the Hebrew word, and it just means before marriage, a woman of marriageable age. Parthenos is the Greek word for virgin, um, and it's actually what is used in Matthew, which we will get to in a second. Um, but it, regardless, when we refer to a virgin birth, we are talking about the mother of Jesus. And shall call his name Emmanuel. Emmanuel means God with us, symbolizing the saving presence of God. Okay, so now let's read Isaiah 9, 2 through 7 together. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwell in a land of deep darkness, and on them has light shone. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as they are glad when they divide that spoil. For the yoke of his burden and the staff for his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For every boot of the trampling, tramping warrior in battle, tumult, and every garment rolled in blood will be burned as fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace there will be no end. On the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Okay, so let's break this down. All right, so this passage, like the uh, context, is that they are um, in battle. They are in the middle. Let me go back and tell you. Okay, so the context is this is around 700 BC, and it's the during the time of the Assyrian invasion. Um. And they've kind of taken over and Hezekiah, who is the current king, who is the son of Ahaz, which is correct. Um, basically, he was only able to keep them from like taking Jerusalem by paying tribute. So this is kind of like referring to this time when they're being oppressed and invaded by another land, by the Assyrians. Um so, this whole section right here is referring to the birth or accession of a new heir, um, but it also is pointing, again, to Christ. Um, here, when it says, for the yoke of his burden, it's referring to that military oppression, that oppression by the Assyrians. All right, here where it says, for every boot of the tramping warrior in battle tumult and every garment rolled in blood will be burned as fuel for the fire. This is referring to that the battle is over. 
Um, here, when it says, for us, for to us a child is born, to us a son is given, this must, the, the given part is important because that shows that he was given by God, that he is both fully God and fully human. And he must not just be like the Messiah could be anybody. It could be somebody who's just a perfect human like David. It could have been an angel. It could have been really you know, in theory, the Messiah could be anybody. But the Messiah needed to be fully God, be given to us by God and born as a full human so that he could serve as our savior for that propitiation of sin. Like he had to be fully God and fully human and die for us to serve that role of a savior and a high priest. Um, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. They're saying that this will be fulfilled at the end. Um, and his name shall be called. This is one of the ones that we remember often. Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. All right. And these are not the names of Christ, but aspects of his character. It is who he is. He is a wonderful counselor. He is a mighty, mighty God, an everlasting father, a prince of peace, and what he has come to do. Of the increase of his government and of the peace, there will be no end. And that isn't just um, like if you go literally by what Revelation says, that it's this like millennia, this thousand year reign of Christ when he returns or um, or not. Either way, it's not just a millennia. It's not just while he's on earth. It is eternity. There will literally be no end of the rule of Christ. So that is Isaiah 9, 2 through 7. I also realized that I misspoke earlier and told you guys 31, 15 for Jeremiah, but it's actually 33, 15. And we're actually going to look at, um, I think, four, 14 through 17. Let's see. So yeah, let's read 14 through 16. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. In those days and at that time, I will cause a righteous branch to spring up for David, and he shall execute justice, justice and righteousness in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will dwell securely. And this is the name by which it will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. So this is a promise that God is making that the ruler will always be from David, that the succession of Davidic rulers and that we will always have a descendant of David on the throne. So it's just this promise from God that there will a branch spring up from the line of David um, and that the days are coming when he will fulfill the promise that he made to the house of Israel. Um, and he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. And Jerusalem will dwell secure, securely. And this is the name by which it will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. All right, so now we're going to read like what all these prophecies like culminated to. In Matthew 1, 17 through 25. All right. So this is like right after we've read the genealogies in Matthew. 17 starts with, So all the generations from Abraham to David were 14 generations, and from David to the deportation to Babylon, 14 generations, and from the deportation to Babylon to the Christ, 14 generations. Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife. For that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. 
All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke from his sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife, but knew her not until she had given birth to a son, and he called his name Jesus. Okay, so this first section was talking about from David, Jesus is a direct descendant of David. So it's really important that it mirrors all of those prophecies that we read that Jesus is a descendant of David. So this whole section right here, when the angel comes to Joseph, it just shows the exemplary character of Joseph. And this is, Matthew is the only part of the Bible that actually talks about like Joseph and like what happened to him and how he chose to support Mary. Um, but it shows the exemplary character of Joseph and that he didn't question it. Like the angel said, Mary's with child. It's the Holy Spirit. She, she's going to give birth to the Messiah. Like this is what you need to do. And he, he didn't question it. He, he did it. Um, and this part right here, the Lord has spoken by the prophet. This is what we read earlier in Isaiah seven fourteen, And it's important that Matthew included this to assert the divinity of Jesus. Um, so this whole section right here is really good. Um, it's just showing you, um, that, you know, Mary's with, was, that they were betrothed. Mary's was with child before they had, had sexual relations. Um, he was going to divorce her quietly because even when he didn't know it was God, he was going to be, um, respectful about it. Um, but the angel came to him and told him this is born of the Holy Spirit. This is God. This is the Messiah. And this is the verse that was referenced in Isaiah. And when he awoke, um, after he did exactly what the angel told him to do. And he didn't have sex with Mary until after Jesus was born. Um, and we do know that G that Mary did have sexual relations. She didn't stay a virgin. I know that's one of the things that like, um, I think that I don't know for sure, so if you were Catholic, let me know, but I've always been under the uh, understanding that the Catholic religion, religion believes that Mary stayed a virgin and didn't have children, um, but Jesus actually had, you know, siblings, um, so in the Protestant religion, we do believe that he did not have sex with her until after Jesus was born, but they did have sexual relations, and Jesus did have, you know, half-siblings. Um, that were born to Mary and Joseph. Um, but yeah, so this is the culmination of those prophecies that we read in Isaiah and Jeremiah that point to Jesus, that Jesus would be born of a virgin, that Jesus, there's other parts of the Bible that we didn't read that said that he would be born in Bethlehem, that his name shall be called Emmanuel, that he would be born of the line of David and fulfills those promises that God gave that the future king, you know, that would reign for eternity would be born from the line of David. So those are the culminations of the prophecies um, that Jesus would be born. So uh, that's the end of our Bible study for our first week of Advent. Um, remember for week two on 12-8, the peace week, our Bible verse that we are going to study together is just one part of the Bible. We're not going to be jumping around here on out, um, but we're going to read, except for the Christ Day, we are going to read several different verses on my Christ Day. But week two is going to be Luke 1, 26 through 55. Um, so I look forward to studying that passage with you all next week. Um, and remember to check the link in my description box below for the Advent Bible Study Printable. Um, after the month is up, I'll probably uh, put that printable. Actually, I might go ahead and post it on my Etsy shop for sale. But like I said, it will be free in my Patreon. So go get that and we will study the Bible together for Advent season. Okay, guys, let me know if you have any questions in the comment section below. And of course, as always, if you love this video, if you love Bible study related content, definitely hit that like button and consider subscribing and following along with this community of fellow believers as we not only discover what we believe, why we believe it, but also who God is 
um, and just deepen our walk and our faith in our Christian God. Um, so I welcome you to come along with us. So definitely consider hitting subscribe if you'd like to support the channel. The best ways to support the channel are to like, subscribe, share. Engagement really helps too. So comment below and let me know what you thought of this Bible study. And as always, remember that God has not forgotten you and we are in this together. So you can also let me know in the comment section below how I can pray for you during this Advent season. Um, I wish you guys all the best. I'm sorry you didn't get a video last week. I Something happened with the video footage. I am praying that does not happen this week. Please pray I have no further issues with my camera set up um, and that all is well <laughs> with the video footage for today um, and that we are able to uh, get all of our footage filmed for you guys for our Bible studies between now and Christmas. Um, I wish you guys all the best. I hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving and I will see you guys next week. Oh, and stay tuned. I am going to be doing a vlog video on like a mini decorate with me and also sharing some of my family's Christmas traditions. So stay tuned for that. Okay guys, I can't wait to see you in my next video. Have a wonderful week. God bless. Bye.